the only way that we currently have on how we can like get elements to interact with like the outside world right actually now on like open ai playground they have added like this really cool feature where you can sort of like generate a system from this is actually quite important because in real world what ends up happening was that the llm will call a tool even you don't want it to this is like a small like <coughs> feature review on like llm tool calling and also like tool calling data sets and like how they're made and how people are trying to like get llms to do function calling and tool calling which is basically like the only way that we currently have on how we can like get elements to interact with like the outside world right like very basic like the best practices that like that i basically went and like read a bunch of blogs and notebooks and experimented with that are like okay these are how you like build like good applications with elements are like three four one is that so like a like a little bit of an overview would be that a uh, json schema that basically like how these llms call an external api or like try to interact with the external world right but when you start to use like real world apis like i don't know even like a gmail api their json schemas tend to get pretty hairy so like flat out recommendation that could like improve how you use these features would be to flatten your json schemas as much as possible right so for example like there would be i don't know like a and then you could have like something else inside it called like c right and this is quite typical of like more complicated like uh, functions and apis that you might end up using so the idea is that you kind of try to flatten it because that would kind of make it easier to easier for like the llm to understand so you would try to like flatten it to something like a and then like the so this is kind of the general idea i try to remove like far far uh, reaching references and try to just like compress it in, into like one or maybe like two nest nested json so that's like something i found out by also just like by experimenting because like i've been using tool calling for like a little bit so the second thing is that uh, system prompts go a long way system prompts and also like just personas as well right so if you just like tell the llm that hey you are expected to call tools and you are expected to like do some reasoning or you are expected to like chain some things together then it just like performs better even just telling it that like okay you have these functions in the system prompt helps and i also like explain like how actually when you use say open ai or anthropic and you use tool calls there how i think they might be doing it because i looked at how llama does tool calling the third thing is that good tool descriptions like are actually better than having your few short examples in the system or the user from what i mean by this is that i'll actually just experiment with this over here so um actually now on like open ai playground they have added like this really cool feature basically copied from anthropic where you can sort of like generate your system from what they actually added more than anthropic was that you could actually just also ask it to intelligently like generate your tool calls as well and you can either describe it or like paste your code to do it so this is i'm just going to paste it here first so that you can see this is an example of like okay i have a bunch of like pyrantex schema then like i'm calling like one api endpoint which is using these parametric schemas so it is actually works if i also this like i have a prompt as well so i'm just using that so so that i can like try to show how i would like also fix it it generates a pretty good version of a tool called cool so this is like one tool call that i uh, generated right so what i mean but when i say that a uh, good description help a lot is descriptions are on two levels one is like on the function level which basically is where you tell that okay this is what the function does this is when to call it and this is what it will return to you when you when you're done with it so this is kind of like a very very simple function this is like a very simple description the other descriptions that are like equally important are parameter level descriptions so like for example this uh, this is like a description of like the what should be provided to like as an argument on the function level right so these two descriptions are like really important and the more you can uh, like express it in a better manner the more performant your like llm tool calls will be right for example here i would actually like expand this like a lot more i would like add that okay i would add like when to be called date which will be returned and then i would like maybe also just add stuff like what the functionality is so these three four things if i like explain on this level and then on this level if i just like adding in like types expected also helps because a lot of times the llm would just like mess up the type you would expect say like 5% 
but it would just output 0.05. So something interesting is that scale.com has like a leaderboard on agenting tool use of and they've like kind of compiled this from like enterprise data. They don't really tell you the benchmarks they use and like how they compute the stuff, but it's kind of meant to be a black box, I guess. But these are the scores that they've given to like tool usage. Like O1 preview is highest at like 62% or something and then like GPT-40 and then Claude. Yeah, so uh, I think what is interesting to me is that like even like these numbers vary but they do they never like they never like top out when you look at like tool use leaderboards or events right they never really say that okay 80 percent tool use is perfect 90 percent tool use is perfect even though you would see this in like a lot of other benchmarks so mm -hmm. this is like one leaderboard this is fully black box then like highlight some stuff here this is like one leaderboard which i found to be interesting the other like very well known sort of like study done is by the gorilla group in uc berkeley so this is called like the bunk berkeley function calling a leaderboard right and here they sort of like measure two smaller level metrics one is like okay they have different types of tool calls one is like okay a simple tool call where the LNF just has is give it one tool call and all it has to do is get the arguments correct. Right? The second type would be is like multiple tool calls where it has to like choose which one to call. So this is like I guess one test of reasoning. The third is like okay parallel tool calls where there might be like some tool calls which can be called parallelly so it should opt in for that because that just makes things faster. Or it might need to call some tools repetitively like okay tool A and then tool B and then tool A again something like that. The fourth is the relevance test where they check if like an LLM can discern when to call a tool and when not to call a tool. So this is actually quite important because in real world what ends up happening as I saw in like papers and also just like from testing it out was that the LLM will call a tool even if you don't want it to. So they have these like relevance tests as well. I can just like show the workspace function calling the user code as well. I'm just gonna like slowly explain the thing. So they also have two general tests. One is where they test the function call by the LLM using like an AST. How they do this is like they, they outline this in the paper but they just, they just check okay is this code or is this function call that the uh, LLM has generated like correct syntactically? The second is they actually just run it and then see if it's calling and like returning the correct values. So they have like single turn, multi turn, and then I think if I just do this, so here you can see okay, simple, multiple, parallel. So they have like these tests here, maximum accuracy is like okay, GPT 4.0. LNGPT4 Turbo and this also tops out to around like 68, 69% as well. So yeah, this, this is like the leaderboard that tests on the argument side of things. Right. They tested it only on GPT4 and GPT3.5. Um, in fact, uh, like artificial analysis has this like study done, right, where they look at uh, different evals for like different providers for like the same particular model, right. So this is Llama 3.1 and Strap 7 TV and uh, say uh, like MMLU would, would differ from 84 to 81%. For example, this uh, paper called uh, Agent Instruct, what they did was they yeah, they basically just like used raw code as like a seed and then they transformed it and then they kind of like, they they expanded it. So this would be like say one particular tool call that they would give it, right? Which would be like, okay, view all four items. And they would kind of reconstruct a lot of tools based on that one tool call. So these are all like generated by like search food items, get food item details, track user food, get user, right? Um, so this is one layer and the other, this is like gen this is like synthesizing it all from using LLF. The other way is that you use things like rapid API existing tools and existing like APIs that actually exist and then sort of like uh, try to convert them into tool calls um, with the verification stuff and then use that as a business data set. So that now, now you have a data set of just like tool calls that an LLM can understand but now you need to sort of use convert them into like a conversational multi-turn conversational data side where there will be like a um, this paper actually explains it really well so this paper what it does is that it takes like tools as an atomic task so it would go bottom up it would just look at tools and then try to like kind of generate easy very easy tool calls like okay who's the author of the book and then uh, when was the author of this book born and it would compose them into like one particular difficult compositional task and it would generate functions for them right and then after that it would use those functions and then it would have like a user agent and assistant agent and then like a tool agent and then those these three agents would come together to generate like a multi don conversation and this would be this is kind of like the final data set that you that you essentially want yeah this is kind of like the final data set that you actually want and like want to train on is where okay there's a user assistant and tool call happening in like a conversation right? because that is what 
essentially the LLM will work at its right on uh, when you when it comes down to it. Because that you that you would see or that we see most of it is two, uh, actually two three. One is uh, brow using browsers and search APIs. Um, the second is using code sandboxes to like execute some Pythonic functions, right? And there is like a bunch of like uh, coding tools that like we have that are also being used quite a bit. So in in that coding toolkit, then we would have like things like like git clone or like change file directory or like uh, clone it there or like run or like basically like what you would use uh, what like something like cursor would use like these are like all like tool balls. So like I was just like looking at uh, how kind of like to summarize what this means. Like I was just like sort of thinking about this because something I've been like attempting. I think uh, this is like summary summary of like three two three different papers three four different papers that it is like. People would just like find a lot of APIs code, open API specs. Uh, they would classify into domains and like so that they can give them personas. Like one domain would be sort of like like there are different ways of classifying it. One would be like health based, one would be like admin based or something. Other others would like classify them based on the languages. Then you want to like construct a real or a dummy API server in a DB so that you actually call those functions to verify that this chain is correct and then uh, you break down these like APIs or these open API specs into like proper do calls and then verify so that's like one way to do it um, and then other way to do it is something I recently like found out was you could I mean what if you could essentially take a look at open API specs and then automatically like generate trees of like API calls that can be called in like succession. So if you look at a Swiggy API, right, you can't call create order without calling add four item to cart. If so if you could like generate those chains for like one particular open API spec, you could sort of like generate like a bunch of like really good tool call chains that you can then later convert it to like data set. So this is what like this particular paper actually does is that okay, um, it actually First, just like generates an atomic task that can be that can exist independently, and then it would try to compose them together. Got and then like the, it would also see semantically that does this composition make sense, yeah. and then later on it would also like there would also be a verification step where it looks at the composition and the conversation and see if it makes sense again, um, and then like if yes, then like then it gets added to the assets. Yeah, I think uh, this is pretty much it. I have like something like something small to show which is just like agent frameworks are usually quite suboptimal to use because they would they would never like do proper tool called description so i i might have code so if you look at this right browser base is like a tool which is like is for like using browser on the cloud or whatever right and here like its descriptions are like very like vague um, it's like URL description is very vague. It's like main thing is quite vague. Like it doesn't tell what it actually like does and like what is what you feed into it and how you can optimize it. And this is like built in, right? So you would think that okay, you know, I'm I'm using Crow AI or I'm using Lightning. Let me just like use this built-in tool. Usually ends up like hurting your performance. I feel like this is something that like a lot of people should probably watch out for. Yeah. The other thing, the production level that uh, is quite interesting to me was. I've shared this with like I think a couple of people. This framework actually has like a feature that it wants to implement where it just like sort of takes your function in your code and then you don't have to convert it directly using an LLM to convert it into a tool for using just like like a wrapper function. So this is like one function and you would sort of just like wrap it around and say auto generate equal to group and it would directly do the thing that I did like over here uh, where I fed it like my particular set of like Functions, but uh, I mean, if done well, this could really help a lot of people, at least me. But I, I mean, like even here, right? You would probably want to like play around with this and just see how it might work or help your performance. So yeah, that's like all of my notes of on like around tool calling, tool calling data sets and whatnot. A paper about AI regulation that was originally submitted to Archive in June 2022 shows a figure with three axes, where each axis has a label word at both ends. Which of these words is used to describe a type of society in physician society ar article submitted to archive.org on August 11, 2016? So this would be like a question that would be that like you would want your agent to solve. And um, so this uses like basically every best implementation under the word to solve this benchmark.